Numbers often follow patterns in real life. Sometimes adding the same number over and over creates a series. Other patterns are more complex. For example, let's look at the measurements of the angles of some polygons. Notice that the sum of the interior angles of these figures is not only constant, but follows a pattern. First, let's figure out what the pattern is. If we take the quadrilateral sum of 360 degrees and subtract the triangle sum of 180 degrees, we get 180 degrees. 540 for the pentagon minus 360 for the quadrilateral again gets us 180 degrees. Now, can you find the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon? Take the 540 from the pentagon, add the common difference of 180 degrees, and you get the hexagon's value. How would you find the sum of the interior angles of an octagon? Let's look at another example. Alyssa worked 15 hours a week and earned $108.75 in gross pay before taxes. The next week she earned $145 working 20 hours and $181.25 working 25 hours a week. How much would her gross pay be if she worked 30 hours a week? Don't shy away because this is a story problem. To visualize it, we can create a table as we did in the previous example. Take $145 minus the $108.75 to get a difference of $36.25. Next, take the $181.25 and subtract the $145 to find a common difference again of $36.25. To get the value that she would make after working 30 hours a week, add the $181.25 to the $36.25. Because the hours are increasing by a constant rate and the gross pay is requested for the next incremental value, the pattern can be written simply as the three gross pay values separated by commas with three dots following it. The three dots, known as an ellipsis, indicate that the pattern continues. In this real-world example, the pattern would be accurate for values between 0 and 40 hours. Why would the pattern likely change above 40 hours? Here's a final example of patterns in real life. This amazing little device holds a thousand songs, and it goes right in my pocket. Steve Jobs coined the phrase, put 1,000 songs in your pocket, with the initial release of the iPod. Since then, storage capacities and the estimated number of songs that would fit in iPods has grown. Do they follow a pattern? It appears between the first and second generations of iPods, they do follow a pattern. Then the third, fourth, and fifth generations of iPods and the recently released iPod Classic follow a different pattern. If you are curious why the estimates of the first two generations don't fit the rest of the pattern, research the difference between MP3 and AAC encoding. For links and resources related to this video, visit SysTree.com.